I Dave and I know wrestling. Do you want a wrestler that's only sometimes Canadian? Do you want a wrestler that only sometimes has abs? And do you want a wrestler that's only sometimes a legend because he really has done a lot in AEW to undo his own legacy? Then allow me to introduce to you my client for Dave Knows Wrestling's Honest Promos, the Abdominal Snowman, Chris Jerushmo. At least he's not the worst wrestling Canadian, Chris. Christopher Irvine or Chris Jericho. Behold, the wrestler who has fallen from grace faster than anyone without a Bowflex or a Gawker video. As Chris used to be a promising young rookie who was really charismatic, and has now become an old embarrassment that people are wondering why they ever liked in the first place. Luchasaurus isn't the only dinosaur in AEW. Longtime fans no doubt remember him as the courageous Lionheart in ECW, and for things like his comedic segments in WCW such as the Jericho Conspiracy Theory, which Sami Zayn kinda ripped off years later, only to now see him as a sundowning parody of himself that seems like he might need help getting dressed or eating. And it's a shame, really, since he's probably the most successful use of a Dusty finish, even though it wasn't booked by Dusty. If you recall, back then, there were those who viewed Chris as nothing more than a mere cruiserweight, an image that he and his metabolism are fighting even to this day. And his metabolism is winning. But after beating Triple H for the title and then getting it retcon, WWE saw that Chris would be accepted by the masses as a world champion. And so, while he was on the verge of leaving due to frustration, this propelled him straight into the main event scene, where he would eventually become the first ever undisputed WWE champion. It's too bad that in the following WrestleMania, all the fans still rather have had Hulk Hogan and Rock in the main event than Chris. Guess he's not so much le champion as he is a less champion. Don't worry though, as Chris would eventually pay his recompense by getting yet another WWE title match at WrestleMania, but this time it would get pushed aside for The Rock and John Cena instead. Not to mention his WrestleMania Universal title match that was all set up and ready to go with Kevin Owens, only to watch it devolve into being a United States Championship match that happened way early in the card. Plus, let's also keep in mind that he was supposed to be in the main event bout for WrestleMania 16, only to get replaced by Mick Foley. And to make matters worse, he also created the Money in the Bank match but was never able to win one. Man, everybody really does hate Chris. Although, things would all work out, as Irvine became the first ever AEW World Champion over that of Adam Page. And while a near 50-year-old beating a younger talent is seen as something of a bad thing in WWE, in AEW it's fine because of, um, the key demographic or something? Which, aside from being a statistic that AEW fans only seem to bring up whenever Dynamite does well in it, really has no value. Let's be real here, the whole key demo crap is an over-dramatized number that Jericho came up with just to sell a few t-shirts and to justify AEW's lack of growth. Don't believe me? Fine, just put a commercial on Raw and put a commercial on Dynamite and tell me which one cost you more. There is a lot of irony in caring about something that you claim only advertisers care about. Anyway, Chris did his job by getting this inane catchphrase over and getting smarts to think that it matters more than it does. But speaking of morons that follow bright shiny objects at the expense of their own well-being and common sense, let's look at all the geniuses that followed Chris to that concert in Sturgis during the height of the pandemic. That's right, Chris's old man garage band was responsible for about a quarter of a million brand new cases at the super spreader event. I wouldn't risk stubbing a toe to see Fozzy. With old guys like Irvine, it's no wonder that AEW young people don't want to listen to their elders. However, I should point out that as old as Chris is, he still has arenas of young people singing along to his entrance music. You know, that catchy song about someone's own mental insecurities betraying them to their own detriment? Man, heed your own warning, Chris. Although, the really funny thing is, while fans seem to know every word to Chris's current entrance song, Chris has admitted that he really didn't know the words to his last one in WWE. At least now we know he doesn't need a clock to get over. Oh, but on the subject of old men diddling their instruments, does anyone remember when Chris used to go by the name of Moon Goose McQueen? If Jericho wasn't already enough of a pseudonym, he had to add yet another layer to try and cover up the last name of his famous hockey fan. But you know, Chris has always had a really weird sense of humor. Like when he had that bodyguard that looked more like a homeless marshmallow than an actual person. Which happened as a result of WCW telling Chris, go to the power plant and pick anyone you want to play the role of your bodyguard. So of course, picking the guy unloading the truck in the back was obviously the best choice. Then again, kayfabe or otherwise, it's not like he needed a bodyguard for his feud against Goldberg since he allegedly beat him backstage in real life. All because apparently Goldberg might have called him small. And throughout the years, that chip on Chris's shoulder has only grown along with his gut. Which is the same exact gut that started trending on Twitter when a bunch of lapsed wrestling fans who were waiting for the NBA to start saw the overrun of Dynamite only to ask themselves, what is that thing that ate Chris Jericho? 
Yep, way to bring wrestling back. Now fine, that's not fair, as Chris has done a lot to help the company. As long as you ignore all the signs that point to him as the one who was stirring the pot against CM Punk. Because without Punk, who was their biggest star, AEW has really begun to drop off. Good thing we gave Irvine some backstage pull, huh? But come on, he deserves that kind of executive position, as he's always remained classy by doing things like getting that stupid bubbly meme over, and forgetting the championship belt on a limo, and most of all by having Le Dinner Debonair. Yup, that's right, a musical dance number. That's what your precious key demo really wants. This is wrestling! It's crap like this that drove fans like me to Jerichoholics Anonymous. My name is Dave, and I'm a recovering Jerichoholic. However, we can forgive this one minor faux pas, because it's not like Chris has done anything else to make wrestling look fake, aside from that crash pad that he used for the Blood and Guts match, as well as being caught on camera, opening one eye, and talking on screen when he was supposed to be selling. And let's also remember his double powerbomb move, where you could blatantly see his opponent holding onto his wrist, showing the cooperation. And they say the Young Bucks are the little flippy guys with executive power in AEW that are ruining the business. Ah, but forget about all that, and just remember that Chris is one of the very best technical wrestlers of all time, which should be no surprise, since he did graduate from the famous Hart Family Dungeon and trained under Stu Hart. And by that I mean he briefly met two of the lesser famous Hart brothers while he trained under Ed Langley. However, the bigger travesty here is that while he did train at the Hart Brothers school, he was forced into an angle where he had to say that Shawn Michaels was his favorite wrestler of all time, even though the two of them only debuted six years apart from each other. If they were not, you should still get your Canadian citizenship revoked after saying that. Ah, but that does remind me that WWE itself did try to ignore Chris's northern heritage, like during that time period where they built him from Manhasset, New York. And yes, he was born there, but he considers himself as being from Canada since that's where he grew up and he is a dual citizen. But WWE thought he'd be more likable as a wrestler if he wasn't Canadian. But personally, it's actually the other way around for me. Anyway, this isn't the only thing that Irvine's ever gone back and forth on. Let's just look at all of his different finishers that he's had over the years. Like his non-remarkable breakdown, the lion salt, the code breaker, the Judas effect, and is it the elevated lion tamer or is it the regular Boston crab walls of Jericho? Wow, he really is competing with Dean Malenko over who has more moves, huh? In the end, if you want a wrestler who got WWE to let him go to New Japan only because he promised that he would never wrestle for another American company, a wrestler who rocks out while he clocks out, and a wrestler who keeps getting referenced by Cobra Kai for some reason. Then allow me to introduce to you my client for Dave Knows Wrestling's Honest Promos. Lame champion. The highlight of nobody's night anymore. The Jerichon 6000. Pounds. The Ayatollah of Lockdown Rock and Rolla. Why too far from okay. The King of Bland Bland, baby. Armbar. Christopher Irvine or Chris Jericho. Looks like I just made the list.